Good evening and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I hope you're all excited. Hold on to your seats. I've got an amazing surprise for you this evening. But before we get started, do not forget, we've got amazing shows coming to you live every weekday this week. We've got Zaman Tungwakumalo with the Private Property Podcast. That's Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. We've got Mbali with the Farming Podcast. That is every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And of course, Chad Viveros travels around Mzanzi. Johannesburg looks at amazing houses. That's every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. I come to your screens every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And like I said, an amazing surprise for you this December. Of course it is, we're heading over into Christmas and the new year. But before we even get started with the show, I'd like to take this moment to look back and reminisce on the amazing guests that came to our show, shared their stories with us. As we know, personal stories is real lived experience. So who better to educate us on what to do and how to do it. As you can see, we're in an absolutely gorgeous venue today, the Garden Venue in Randburg. Before we even get started, I'd like to give them a special thanks for sponsoring us with this amazing venue. If you're looking for a place to get married in the middle of the hustle and the bustle and the noise of the city, Johannesburg, the garden venue based in Randburg, absolutely gorgeous. The contact details are below on the screen right now. Give them a shout and come and see it for yourself. Thank you so much to all our guests who came onto the show to share their stories with us. Um, as you know, on the First Time Home Buyer Show, this is a moment where we learn uh, from driven individuals and they educate us on the daily about the mistakes that they've made and also just that first time home buying journey, everything we need to know about purchasing property, all the information right here on the show. And just before we get started, as I said, we do have a surprise for you this evening. But before we get into that, I'd like to take a look back on the year that we've been through, the guests that have come and shared their stories. And as you know, we've been through a lot of monumental moments throughout the year, from the 50th show celebration, to having APSA on the show, to having guests all the way from Cape Town, and just those beautiful property investors who have come and shared their knowledge with us. Understanding all your home buying costs. We had Zyda Manuel on the show all the way from APSA. I'd like you to sit back, relax, and let's take a look at what Zyda had to say in that episode. I think our apps, our, our, our home loans website has all our tools available. It's accessible to everybody. And I encourage you to make use of our pre-buying digital tools, mm. um, as well as do the pre-qualification, learn, uh, take our e-learning course, and submit your home loan application online and get an outcome. And that is everything available to you. Right. And that's how you can get hold of us at APSA Home Loan. As we heard from Zyder Manuel, the importance of, you know, saving and budgeting. And of course, we know APSA offers amazing tools to help us make that journey so much easier. And we also, this year in 2021, we had our super fan on the show. That is Sammy. Sammy came and sat down and we spoke all about student accommodation, the ins, the outs, the mistakes. Also, Sammy himself has learned so much from just watching all our private property podcasts. Let's sit back and take a look at what Sammy has to say. To think about, you know, with property, what, I, what I've learned is you need to start practicing it, like following people that are into property, looking for mentors. And that was Sammy, not only, like I said, not only does he learn so much from watching the shows, but he's also gone through a journey and made his own mistakes and continues to learn and grow every day. Thanks once again, Sammy, for spending the time and giving us the opportunity to learn from you as well. Of course, we celebrated Youth Month this year in the spirit of youth, educating and motivating youth to take that step and also dive into the property industry. This is Ebo Kwa Grain, and we sat and we watched and learned so much from Ebo as he took to the whiteboard and educated us. Let's have a look. Status ideal. Because from your property, you get income. As it depreciates, you still earn money. You are able to build in your equity. It appreciates in value. And you are always able to leverage. So as you do in here, you, you grow up. So why property? That's because it's the only asset class that will give you all of this before you buy. 
And that was Ebo. Please take a moment and go and see that episode. It is really informative. Education is key. Knowledge is power, as we know. We move on and we celebrated women. All throughout the month of August, we had women on the show, spectacular women who came in, shared their story. You know, how we as women can invest in property with not having millions of rands, but just taking that leap of faith and starting your property journey. We sat down with an amazing woman, Celine Gile, and we actually spoke about property stock file. We know there are millions, multiple different strategies one can use for property. Let's have a look and hear what Celine Dile has to say about a property stock file. When, and when you think you know everything or you think you've made it, that's the beginning of the end for you. Right. And there you have it, ladies, sisters doing it for themselves. Of course, the 50th episode was magical, spectacular. You know, we, we popped champagne. We had an amazing guest with us, Sylvia Milosevic, who is the CEO and founder, as well as property mentor of Riches and Beyond. Beautiful young woman who came onto the show, shared her story. Let's sit back and watch what lessons Sylvia has learned. You know, I give myself a lot of grace. Mm. I've learned to develop a a good relationship with myself. Yeah. You be know, be kind to yourself. Be kind to myself. Mm. To listen to myself. And when I don't feel like it, when I'm feeling down, if I feel like crying, I allow myself to cry. Yeah. If I feel really tired, I say, "Ah, uh -uh, we gotta stop. Yeah. It's not nothing will happen. We gotta stop. Let's take a break." So, self care and grace, giving yourself grace, has it. Yeah, it goes a long way. So I'm very kind to myself. Yes. I've learned to I've learned to do that. I wasn't it wasn't always that way, but I've learned to do that. And exactly. that's that's keeping me going. As a result of that, I've got lots of energy with doing the things that I'm doing because mm -hmm. I always know that when it comes through a certain level, my my everything, my intuition, everything starts saying, ah ah, Sylvia, <laughs> straight time for us. Yeah. And there you have it, Sylvia speaks about grabbing opportunities, but we're not done yet. Of course, we had amazing shows throughout the year, and with the time that I have, I could only choose a few. And of course, this one is very special to me. Um, you know, making your parents proud, making our moms proud is all we strive to do. I sat down with Dr. Loazi, who spoke about how he owns three properties and made his mama proud. Let's watch. Time that uh, I've had money, mm. I found that I suck when it comes to saving. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, so that's why um, I chose property. Mm. So I, I channel most of my finances into. To, into property. And that when you do save or decide to save, attach a goal mm. to, to your savings, be it short term, uh, be it short, medium, long term, attach a goal to, mm. to what you're doing. And that's it. We all know that the property journey can be a little bit risky and daunting, but Dr. Loazi did it and he made his mom proud. He shared a very powerful story with us that evening about the power of home. And we continue to learn more about that on every single show that we do here on the First Time Home Buyer Show. And of course, as you know, we sat down with a lovely young man, 20 years old, selling an 18 million rand penthouse all the way in Santon. And ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please, that penthouse was recently sold. And the surprise that I have for you this evening is no other than in Port Buerta as we sit down and we dive deep into what now? What next? Just before we get into the festivities of December in Port, that was a great Christmas present going into the new year, selling an 18 million rand penthouse. I would like to emphasize on that. But let's continue with the show and learn from Import what it is that he's learned from this this journey and what we too can take home with this. Good evening, Ampo, how are you? Good evening, I'm good, and how are you, Esther? I am so well, I'm so excited, and thank you so much for coming back. Mm -hmm. um, what, you know, the biggest question when I first saw your tweet, because I know our initial show that we did to, to, to remind the viewers is that tweet went, went, went almost viral, mm -hmm. and um, it was such a big deal, and you know, you were asking, let's help this young estate agent solve this million dollar property in Santon. And thank you again for that because you invited us into that gorgeous home and now it is sold. What does that feel like? It feels amazing. I mean, it still feels like surreal, um, mm. you know, because it's something that I was manifesting. I basically was living in that apartment um, and I would go upstairs and say, I'm going to sell this, I'm going to sell this. And when it happened, it was so casual, you know, mm. you think that would be this big moment and you'd feel overwhelmed, but it was so casual. And still, I'm still like in disbelief and it just mm. shows you like hard work and manifestation and having faith and just oh. being persistent and, you know, having mm. perseverance will get you somewhere. Mm. I love that you said you went up into the apartment 
department and you kept saying, I'm going to sell this. Yeah. And, you know, even in our previous show, we talk about we spoke about manifesting. Yes. Uh, what else did you do to help you push that sale? I used a lot of social media, as you can tell, like I use social media because I don't believe, you know, you need, with that kind of property, yeah. it has a specific buyer and a specific niche. It's not everybody sure. has like 16 or 80 million just laying around yeah. in their account. So I had to try different tactics like social media, using influencers, like mm. things that were never done in the property space. Sure. And it did shake a few people, but you know, I was like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to sell this house. Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit of a secret. Mm. I know that you said you use social media because the, you're right, agents aren't using that um, mm. platform. How uh, was it easy for you to go through that entire journey? Because we're young, we know social media. Mm. You know, t tweeting is easy for us. Yeah. But obviously now we don't, we never ever tweeted products. But yeah. now we're tweeting million dollar rand, then, you know? Yeah. Mansions, how was that process for you? The process was grueling. Um, mm. I wouldn't lie, like people, like, people would look at the journey and say to me, you know, they'll think it's easy or like, right. you know, why are you being insensitive in such times? But literally I said, even in my post that, you know, um, I had to function from a level, like a different level of frequency. Mm -hmm. Like I sort of felt like I was not myself, like challenges were coming, but I still get up and rise up. I, you know, I read the comments, people were being mean, but that did not deter me. So it wasn't always rosy, yeah. but I knew what I had to sacrifice. Because one thing I believe in is the sacrifice should equal the reward. Right. And trust me, to sell a 60 million rand penthouse, you have to sacrifice so much and exactly. you have to function from a level that you've never functioned mm. before. I said this in the last show, but you still, you know, you speak like uh, this old Madala that's been, <laughs> that's been in the game for so long. You know, the knowledge and the, the wealth of knowledge mm. that you have and that you share with us is absolutely spectacular. Oh, I love thank that. Thank you. Um, but what is next for you? What's next for me is definitely I'd like to, you know, I'm going, I'm getting more listings in luxury. Yes. So I really want to establish myself in the luxury space mm. and kind of build a brand around that. And I also would love to, you know, as I always said to you, I want to be a developer. I want to own some form of equity because like course. equity is important, especially as young black people, you know, we need to normalize having equity and also being stakeholders in yeah. such a white dominated industry. Exactly. So I want to break the glass ceilings for many people mm. and just continue continue to, to inspire young people. Right. I love that. I want to, uh, you know, just before we wrap up, because it's absolutely amazing having you back and um, talking about this journey. Mm. But on this journey, you've learned so many different things and yeah. there were ups and downs and obstacles that maybe, I, I know we don't share all of these yeah. things that we go through because some of these things we have to deal with by ourselves Sounds, alone. Yeah. And just be, you know, just, uh, uh, I spoke to a guest recently who shared the this whole concept of sitting in your struggle. Yeah. What are your mm. thoughts on this? Like just sitting in that moment of stress. Mm. And, uh, she, you know, she was talking about how um, she's been able to do that. That, yeah. And then mm. learn from those mistakes. That's powerful. I think mm. also another thing that I recently learned is actually to sit in the struggle and to embrace the struggle and to go through it. Like they say, in order to go through something, it's to literally go through it. So mm. feel the pain, accept the struggle, and understand that if you stop, nothing is going to change. I think with the journey, I, I understood very clearly, like I'm going to struggle to sell this property. It's not going to be easy yeah. because I read a, the book called Think and Grow Rich. Mm. And it says what people get wrong about manifesting is that the sacrifice part of it. Like, what are you willing to put in and sacrifice? What are you willing to go through mm. to reach that goal? Because you can manifest till you're blue and nothing is going to happen. So I think with me, the lesson I learned is you really, the sacrifice must amount to the reward yeah. and the hard work and what you put in. This is why you sound like this, because you read Napoleon Hill. Yeah, love him. I mean, <laughs> I'm still trying to finish that book though, but yeah. yeah, they talk about manifesting all the time and you know, mm. writing it down yeah. and having this thing in your cupboard that you open every Monday morning. morning and see what you want and see true, how you can reach it. True. There was even a part in the book that's right in the beginning because I haven't finished, um, <laughs> where he says, write down how much you want to earn. Earn, yeah, true. Uh, in the year or in the month, month. And keep telling yourself that you will earn, earn that. that yeah. uh, you know, for me, I think it's so easy to say, yes, manifest these things, do these mm. things, but to put this, to, to action Shin, it yeah. can be a little bit difficult. Difficult, it is. And it's lonely. True, it is. I mean, it's lonely, it's depressive. Like, I think people, we don't normalize talking about how hard success is and how lonely and how depressive it is and how, you know, 
how much you need to sacrifice and like most people won't understand it you know and and sometimes you have to walk the journey alone because the vision was not given to any it wasn't a conference call yeah it was given to you you know <laughs> alone and yeah. and another thing i like about napoleon he says to you when there are challenges and things are trying to deter you that means you're getting closer to the goal mm -hmm. so the mistake i've noticed that most people make is you stop yeah when like you know things hit the fan True. and everything goes wrong completely off people stop and that's when your reward you actually closer to your reward yeah because now you you know you've you've gotten the reward mm. you now reap what you've sold so, you've got, yeah. you've sold this amazing mansion and obviously the lesson here is don't stop stop yeah you cannot stop now mm. this is you just getting started that, you're so yeah. young you're ready to continue. continue and what i love about you is that you remain humble throughout this process ah uh, thank you so I much i mean you know i'm sitting next to a millionaire so <laughs> <laughs> i love you know that you just you remain humble and um that you continue to educate yeah. to educate those because i'm sure you know since that episode and also since your tweet there are people mm. who have like you know dm'd you want to want to learn from you yeah true. so i'd like for you to take this opportunity before because i want to do a quick game, game. with you before mm -hmm. you leave before and uh, to those who have messaged you and i know this is free advice and poor mm. let's do it yes um a piece of uh, um a piece of advice you know for yeah. those who want to be in your industry mm. as young as you are sitting at home watching the show what would you tell them i would definitely tell the viewers that you know property is not easy and it's not for everyone you need to go into it mentally prepared as much as it looks amazing on instagram and we make it look glamorous you're shooting these luxury homes and you're making sales but it really requires you to function from a different level and you need to understand that you earn like on commission so you need to be financially prepared to go through that but also i would say the rewards are definitely rewarding i'd say young people get into property you need to be persistent you need to be like you know you need to be committed at the end of the day you need to be hard working and basically like i always say you need to live breathe property and property is not just the nine to five because you have clients calling you at midnight asking you about their deal you have to sacrifice weekends and sundays and be able to work seven days a week and i'll say to you guys like keep going keep pushing whatever dream that you have and whatever struggles that you're currently experiencing that is temporary but keep your vision in your heart and in your mind because it is possible mm. would you honestly recommend this profession to a lot of young people especially if they're starting would you say uh, obviously it's not mm. easy but would you recommend is it a good because for me i, I mean back in my day mm. not that old <laughs> when i was studying yeah. you know um property was never a thing like it wasn't a common degree that mm. we're all talking yeah. about that we want to go into True. or um property management or even becoming an estate agent yeah um and i feel like the young people of our minds are, are shifting Shifted, we're changing yeah. because we see the power in generational wealth and financial literacy and mm. getting into the property game True. would you recommend I would definitely recommend it, but obviously I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. Yeah. I've, I've seen agents that I've worked with and mm. they've given up. Like people are wow. way older than me in years and people started way before me. Like they've just sort of gave up in the journey. And I'm not going to sit here and just lie and say it's amazing, it's glamorous. Mm. You know, it's hard. Mm. It's hard um, getting into the property. Like getting in is easy, but like being consistent and making a sale and you need to have the heart for it. Yeah. So if you do have the heart for property, and you're willing to go all in and what i've noticed you need to be sort of like an entrepreneur yeah because you can't go in, into it with a nine to five mentality yeah. and you need to make sure that you're financially prepared to go without an income for a year or six exactly. months you know even like when you make you make a sale yeah. it takes about three months for you to even to, get the, to yeah. even, for you to even <laughs> get the, the calm so yeah. just be mentally prepared and be financially prepared but i recommend it for young people we need more young people in the in property the game, yeah. in the game you know it can't be your old karen selling properties <laughs> it has to be like young upcoming people because yeah. th that's the market now yeah you know in south africa the people are buying are between the ages it's women between 25 and 40 right. who are buying and they can mm. relate to us because exactly. you, know, you know so i would recommend it yeah and um you know because there's an entire pandemic and mm. i love how you said you need to be an entrepreneur yeah. as well as not just wanting to be an estate agent exactly. because you literally what you did was you took another business me uh, mechanism Zoom. which is social media, media. And I think that agents, we all, you know, you need to be on your toes all the yeah. time to think of the next best thing that can mm. help you sell this property quicker mm. or help you as a brand. And this is very important. This is maybe an off topic. Mm. I believe, and this is something we were taught growing up and even studying, you know, back in varsity, that you are the brand. Yeah, true. So, Mpo's brand mm. for 2022, true. what is that? 
my brand is definitely luxury. Mm -hmm. It's I want to go into education, you know, just educating young people about the property space. Yeah. And I just also, my brand for 2022 is just, I'm a hustler at heart. And like what you said, I feel like people don't even buy into agencies anymore. Right. They buy into you as a realtor and you are a brand, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day. I have like people approaching me, not because of the agency I belong to, but because they see what I'm about and what right. I do. So also, real estate agents they need to remember you're a brand because i've seen some real estate agents they post nonsense on their instagram you know it's nothing to do with property yeah. and when somebody goes like are you even a real and estate let agent Karen's Karen. let me see Karen, you know and it doesn't <laughs> say real estate so i think you need to establish yourself as a yeah. brand and like i always said even with my other businesses that i started like you need to understand people don't buy into a business they mm. buy into other people mm. so you need to be cognizant of the fact that you are the brand and you should always represent it and maintain that and follow True, through and with follow that, through you with know that, yeah thank you again so much for coming mm. i really we had i had so much fun with you and um thank you for you know showing up and sharing your story i think it's so powerful and so enlightening uh, just to have your energy you're just so light you know oh, you just you. i love being in the same room as you me too <laughs> um i want us to do a closing together it mm -hmm. is our final episode for 2021 and we're gonna say you know happy new year merry christmas mm -hmm. and so i'll just start us off and then you can end that one okay, for us okay cool. you know best wishes for those who are watching the first time home by show to everyone at home, thank you so much for tuning in every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Your support throughout the year has been absolutely spectacular. The fact that you are lending us your ears to hear these amazing stories and to learn from these experiences. So have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Last words from you, Mpo. I'd say I wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Go after those goals, get focused and achieve your goals in the New Year. You know, a New Year means a new chapter. So write a beautiful story. Yeah. Write those stories, share them with us. Please, guys, remember, if you have a property story to share with me, just send us a DM comment right now, and we have the space for you to come and share your story. Take care. We'll see you guys again in the new year. Stay safe.